How's everyone doing today? Really good. Good. A couple of announcements. Uh, today there's a CE from 10 to 12. Uh, it's on 1031 exchanges. So if you are interested in investment properties or you're helping somebody through investment properties or you just want to know a little bit more about that, uh, it's a very important class. Because trust me, if you don't understand 1031 exchanges and you have an investor that's trusting you, you could really mess them up. So uh, 10, to 10, 10 to 12 here in this room uh, for that. I think there's even CE for it, right? Two hours, two two hours of CE. So if you're uh, running low on CE, come do that. Um, I think that's it for the week. New right? book, Shoe Dog. New book, Shoe Dog. So uh, are you story. just started it? Fantastic book. Bill yeah. Knight, his story, it's one I think he's written. Are we just starting? Yeah, he's just starting. He, he, okay. Most of you, I just finished. <laughs> Overachiever, John. <laughs> Overachiever. <laughs> well, I, yeah. That's because you didn't read the last book, so you got his head started. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> 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 it, it, it was just more exciting than the last book. I love the last book. Oh, oh well, it's a great you're speaking, book. You're speaking blasphemy against Steve Covey. Plus, <laughs> yeah. Plus he's, he's not dead. He's not even alive anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Die in a horrific way. <laughs> John, <laughs> take it back. <laughs> I Take it back! I, All right. I didn't know he was good. Yeah, he died from cocaine, right? Real quick. Oh. Just All right, right. so uh, I was going to ask you about my assignment from last Friday, but yesterday when Lindsay asked about her assignment, I figured let's not even go there. So, gratitudes, victories. We'll go there. Oh, I got one. I got one. I'm right. dying for this one. Okay. I absolutely smoked a Tesla this morning. Woo! Woo! Yeah. You want to see the look on the guy's face when you smoke him, and he has, he's in a Tesla, right? Like unbeatable bar. Oh, that's mm -hmm. a test. You smoke the Tesla. You want to look at me, man? He's like, he, he drives by. He's like, <laughs> what were you in? I like the thing. This was in my old Ford. Oh, <laughs> Dude, it was the best. Feeling. He's got a fast car too. Yeah, what is that? It's Ford. He's on his on speed. paper though that Tesla would smoke me, but it, you sure it wasn't 100? I, I absolutely messed oh. him up. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's made it state. It's made it state. It's only eight fifteen. Of course. You really have to ask that question. I know it. Yeah. Have you ever raced Austin or uh, um, my truck? <laughs> your, truck. You, your truck can go fast. It just leaves uh, tire marks all the way down your the road. Your truck need to be raced. <laughs> all right. Other gratitudes, victories for the week. It's Finally. not really gratitude, but it's an upcoming event. Rockland okay. Foundation, everyone knows, Century 21 has a foundation, and we're supporting um, Safe Harbor. It's an event happening on November 13th. Everyone should have gotten an email that says, hey, come and join us for the dinner. It is $85, but it's a fun event, and please respond or do something if you want to come and join us for that. It's fun. But mm -hmm. I do have gratitude. Good. Um, yesterday with Louie, with Vanguard. That was a yeah. great day. Did anyone go to that? I really hear it was really good. Oh, yeah, good. it was yeah. nice. It really is thought provoking and you have to stop and think, what is stopping me from doing what I know I need to do? Yeah. So it was good. Good, good. I like and that. They have advertised there another event. You knew one that wants to go. October 23rd? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's buy three tickets, get one, so. Yeah. If you don't know who Louie is, uh, he's Vanguard title, and uh, he's a great presenter, so he's got great information. He's got a wealth of knowledge and been to a lot of training, so um, it's it's great stuff. Try to be involved in different things that are out there. I mean, obviously, we provide a lot of stuff here, but don't limit yourself to learning. Always keep learning, growing. Other gratitudes or victories for the week. I just thought we had Groundhog Day for a minute there. I was, I was about ready to tell you about a seat <laughs> 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 well, I hey, caught, I I I caught a fish. It was this big. <laughs> <laughs> It was even better the second time, Alma, because I understood it more. <laughs> All right, on that note, so uh, we've talked a little bit about distractions. <laughs>
So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this word, focus. And I, I've learned this acronym from it, and I, I've kind of adopted it as something I really like. It's follow one course until success. And I, I really like that because, to me, one of the keys for us to be successful is to focus. I have two stories I want to share with you. First one is, um, it was about a company, and they were back east, and I think it was probably an overzealous marketing guy. He was trying to uh, promote a big event for their company. And so he put on a brochure that uh, he was going to have Richard Branson come in and present for an hour for their company. And he had a big budget, so he figured, oh, we'll get this happening. So he reached out to a contact that he knows, and he says, will you reach out to Richard Branson? I know you know him really well. Will you reach out, reach out to him and see if he'll come speak at my company for an hour? And we'll pay him $100,000 for that hour that he comes. And he said, yeah, I'll reach out to him. So he reaches out to him, calls the, sec the Richard Branson secretary and says, uh, we'd like Richard Branson to come in and speak. It's only for an hour, and we'll pay him $100,000 to do it. And she responds and she says, he won't do that. So he goes back to his friend and he says, I, he won't do that. He says, okay, well, he's a little bit desperate here. He's like, okay, we'll offer him $250,000 for the hour. We'll give him the private jet so that he can come in, speak for an hour, and write it an hour. He can get on the jet and go back. So it's no time wasting. He says, okay, well, he goes back and he asks his secretary, Richard Branson's secretary, will, will he speak for that? $250,000 in the jet so he can be in and out. And she comes back and she says, he won't do that. He's not going to do that. So he goes back to this friend and says, he's not going to do that. He's like, okay. So he's desperate at this point, right? He goes, just name your price. Name your price. We'll try to get that and we'll get him. We just have got to get him here to speak for an hour. Just an hour. He goes back to his secretary and asks him, says, just name your price. Whatever it is, we want you to come and speak for us. And she looks at it and she responds. She says, Richard Branson has three priorities right now. And speaking for a fee is not one of them. And that's why he wouldn't do it. How often do we do that in our business? Or do we accept the money when it's first given to us? My, my guess is that we do that a lot more. That's why we're not billionaires. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. So let that story sink in for a minute on your business, on real estate. What are your focuses on in real estate? So are we all over the place? See, we, we pride ourselves on knowing that we can multitask. We can do multiple things at one time. Right? Who's good at multitasking? Okay, we can do a couple different things. Okay, I want to share with you an example of why multitasking is actually a myth. Okay? Multitasking is more of switching from one to another. Okay, and here and this is what we're going to do. So pick a partner real quick. Okay. Just two. Okay, me, pick a partner real quick. Everybody have a partner? Yeah, but we need a private room. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave these guys alone. Okay, everybody got a partner? Decide between your group who is A and who is B. A is the girl. Okay, A raise your hand. A raise your hand. Okay. Everybody has, a, has an A? You guys got an A? Okay. So I want the A's to the B to the other one to say one to ten as quick as you can. So count one to ten one as fast as you can. Count one to ten as quick as you can. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, was that easy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now I want you to do it with the alphabet. I want you to go from A to J as fast as you can. A to J as fast as you can. A B C D E F G H I J. Okay, well, how was that? Was that it was easy? difficult. Other than, other than Jay trying to screw it up. Jay was looking in No, the you can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> was that easy? Yeah, not as easy. 
Okay? Now what I want you to do is I want you to multitask. So I want you to say A1, B2, C3, because I want you to do them together. Okay? Ready? Go. A1, B1, C3, B2, C3. You say A1, B2, C3, 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 B2, Okay, it, is it possible to do? Yes. 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 It takes a lot more focus. It takes a lot more Brain focus power. and it takes a lot more time, right? Yeah. So when we're trying to multitask and we're trying to do multiple things, what are we actually doing? Slowing, Slowing, down. Down. Slowing it down. Did anyone mess up? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Did we miss a number? Did we miss a letter? Did we have to do the alphabet song? So you can remember how <laughs> what, what came after D? Yeah, it's crazy because my brain felt like it was running in mud. It really just huh. dumbed way down. You know, and it and that's a, that's a great point that I want you to think about in this example here is when we are doing multiple things all day long, we get used to doing those things so it doesn't feel like we're being dumbed down. But in reality, what's happening? We're losing effectiveness. We're losing effectiveness. Well, they, they've actually done a study, and, and because in reality, all you, um, every time you switch a task, your brain has to refocus. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but they did a study, and they found that your IQ level when multitasking is lower than your IQ level when you smoke a doobie. Yep. <laughs> really? Uh, okay. Vote for Proposition 2. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, on that, on that note, and on that note, you're not sitting my dog. <laughs> so, so basically, if you multitask, it's worse than if you don't. Yeah. And, I, and I've heard that study as well. So, so when I, But I want you to think about this. Okay. Normal agent. Okay, we sit down, we're going to prospect. We say we're going to prospect for an hour. Okay, what happens in that hour? Text message. Okay, you got a text message. Phone rings. Phone rings. Someone knocks on the door. Someone knocks on the door. An email. An email comes in, you check it. Okay, so if it takes us time to switch back and we're a little bit less productive every time we start switching between tasks that we're trying to do, how productive is that prospecting session? Not very much, but we feel like it is, right? So what we were talking about is we don't feel this dumbing down feeling, but we are switching back and forth. Right. Yeah. After a day like that too, a person is also more physically tired. It's like cruise control. If you don't have cruise and you're on a long drive and you're constantly looking at the street and then focusing on your speedometer and looking at the street and back to your speedometer, your eye muscles are working all the time you're, and know. they get tired. Yeah, put the crews on, yeah. man, I can do this for hours. I'm and then you're not tired. So. I'm just a big exactly. so. yeah. well, doesn't. Right. It doesn't work. It just goes, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you, you're worn out. Happen? You are. <laughs> yeah. if you, I mean, anybody who's gone on a really long road trip knows that that's just, I mean, that's pretty exhausting. You get home from uh, sitting in your car for like 10 hours, it's like, ooh. <laughs> right? But you're multitasking, right? You're, you're doing, you're switching back and forth long from what you're doing. Long vision. Okay, so if we know that, we think that, right? That makes sense to everybody. Is that does that make sense? Yeah. That's starting to dumb us down. Why do we do it then? We have to feel busy. bad habits. Yeah. Feel busy, bad habits. I feel like that it's because people get angry if you don't respond to a text. I hate text messages. I wish I'd never invented, but everybody loves them. But if people re expect a thirty-minute response time to a text message and or an email, so. Because someone's getting upset, we're going to dumb ourselves down and not be effective. Yeah, I, I think it's a great point. Why else? Because we don't avoid what we're supposed to be doing most often. Yeah, we don't want to. We want to avoid it. Okay, so um, I was listening to this thing. Warren Buffett was talking about how to be more focused and to really dial in your day. And so what he said was, every morning he takes a paper out and he writes down. The 
top 10 things he has to accomplish in the day. Okay? Once he has his list of 10, he finds the top three things that is going to make him the most money and it's going to be the most effective that needs to, like the most urgent things that he needs to do at that point. And he writes those at the top of the sheet on another sheet. So he's got three things on one sheet and 10 things on another. Okay? And this is the really hard part. He takes the other sheet and he throws it in the garbage. Now, the question you probably are asking yourself is those top 10, those 10 things are important. I've got to get them done, right? Is anyone asking that question? Because if, if you're not, then you're probably not doing a lot of things during the day. But that's what he's doing, okay? Then he says, if you really want to be successful, take those top three things, get rid of two of them. Now do one thing until it's done. Then, when you're done with the one thing, or if you keep the three things, if you're done with that, pull your list out, write 10 things that you gotta do, because those things change as your day goes on. They might be different than the first 10 things you put on your list. You write your 10 things down, you find the top three, or top one, throw the rest away, and you only work on that one thing. Does that make sense? Yep. How can that help you in your business? I just need to get rich stuff that I can afford a big office staff that can take care of the other seven things. <laughs> okay. Well, and you bring up a good point. Those things have to be done too, right? So the other seven things have to be done, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I think that the majority, uh, for most of us that are not, you know, at a level where we can avoid the calls, because a lot of people like William Bustos, it's impossible to contact him through email, text, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you can contact his office staff all the time. So he is isolated enough that he can focus on those things that make the most money because everything else, the questions from agents, the contract deadlines, the questions for buyers, sellers, are all being pertained to because of his office staff. He has yeah. one gal that is just over listings. Yeah, so as, as funds become more available, you can put systems in place for it, but <coughs> is it fair to say that we don't have that because we cannot organize what we're doing and focus on one thing? To a degree. To a degree. But I mean, would you say, I guess I'm taking it too literally. Because like right now, today, my number mm -hmm. one thing is, is, my top three things is uh, one, to pick up a new client today as number one. Number two is to find out how I can market the listings I have better to be able to pull in buyers from. And then number three is to figure out how I can get my people under contract or to write a contract. Yeah. But. I have due diligence deadlines today. I know that I'm getting a repair addendum today. I know. I mean, I've already got text messages from sellers with questions mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. So there's already ten things on my list, and I don't feel like any one of them could be thrown away till Monday. Yeah, and I'm not saying throw it away till Monday. I'm not. Let's let's be clear on that. What I'm saying is, when we switch back and forth, if you're focusing on, I got to get the due diligence deadline. I've got to get this then the marketing done, I've got to do all this, and we're switching back and forth, we're going to make it harder for us, it's going to take you longer in the day, it's going to take you away from your high potential. So I'm going to show you something that I learned, Darren Hardy teaches this, um, and he calls this a jam session. Does anyone know what a jam session is? Yeah. Break out the guitar. Break out the guitar and do what? Smoke my doobie. <laughs> okay, just, just play, right? You just pull it out and you play and you just, you focus on it right there, right? Okay, uh, Tony Robbins calls it time blocking. Okay, whatever that time is, I like 90 minutes. That's where you're focusing. So if you gotta get task number one done, we got tons of time or things that we have to get accomplished today. When we start putting it into time, and maybe 90 minutes might not work for you, but when we talked about prospecting, let's say, okay, we're gonna prospect for an hour today. Okay, is anybody gonna prospect today? Okay. If we're gonna prospect, we're gonna prospect for an hour, can we do this for an hour? Can you not answer your text messages and not respond to the due diligence line for an hour? Yeah, because I scheduled it. So when you announced the CE class, I automatically went in and everything I had planned between 10 and 12, I bumped out. Yeah, exactly. so you adjust it. And so, so prospect like, now is at 2 o'clock rather than it was going to be at 9 o'clock. So okay, so the key is, so if I want to have a productive 
prospecting session for an hour, what needs to happen in your life to make that so you don't switch between it? Go off distractions. Okay. Shut everything off. Mm -hmm. Get away from your distractions. What are what are your distractions? So we talked about text messages and emails, right? Okay. On your computer, you can turn off your email. On your text messages, maybe you put your phone in a bag somewhere or something like that. What else is? What else could get you off of your one hour today? We already said they're going to prospect. What? Are we, how are we going to prospect without being distracted? If you if you don't set it up right, if you're working with a client, you might tell them or a, a, another agent <coughs> you're doing a deal with on the other side, I'm not available from nine to eleven. Just so you know that, because I'm prospecting. Can yeah. you can you text me at eleven so then I can honor the thirty minute response and get back with you? Yeah, and if you believe this principle, of what I'm talking about here, as far as focusing on one thing and you create your schedule and you teach people to follow your schedule like that, that's how you become more effective. The challenge is, I'm sure some of you said, well, if it's a buyer that needs to go out and see a home right now, I'm going to go out and show them. I need the money. I need a, I need a deal. Something calls up, I'm going to go do it. What? You want to look at something in Payson? Sure, I got lunch right now. Real, not realizing it's going to take you four hours. Do we do it? It happens all the time, right? So what I'm saying here is find out what your highest priority is for today. What is your highest priority? What do you want to do that you want to accomplish today? Create a jam session for it or time block it. It doesn't need to be 90 minutes today because we're just starting something. Maybe it's 30 minutes today. But I want you to truly time block that. No distractions. No phones. No knocks at the door, nothing nothing can take up that time and see how much more effective you will be in your prospecting today. Alan? You know, it's hard for people to put their phone in a bag somewhere because it's such a source of time, it's a source of whatever, so airplane mode. Yeah, yeah, put it on airplane mode. I mean, it gives me anxiety just to think about my phone being across the room. <laughs> yeah, you know, you bring up a, a great point. So one of my, one of my mentors was talking about um, being productive. He was explaining this, this uh, being productive. When you get on a plane and you're forced to shut down and you have an hour and nobody can talk to you, you don't think about, oh, that one buyer that could have called me or this other thing that could have happened. Just put yourself on an airplane for an hour today. Just mentally put yourself on the airplane. I just checked out. I got on the airplane and I prospected for one hour and see how much more effective your that hour is going to be. Does that make sense? You can even tell your prospects. I'm calling you from a plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got fun with it. Does that make sense? Yep. Can that help you with your business today? Yes. Okay. April. So my coach told me to get a self journal. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, it's really cool. Basically, you time block your day. And then there's a, a um, section for notes, gratitude, blah, all sorts of things. But basically, going off of what you're saying, the time blocking part, they have a whole write-up before you write in the journal about how it works and why and why you need to do this and that. And one of the things they say is they say try really, really hard. As hard as it is, you need to schedule your entire day, everything. So, you know, it can be, you know, a break or it can be, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. It can be anything. But they said fit it in there. And, you know, it could be video games, you can do whatever you want, you put it on there, and the point is it helps you so you don't have to think about what the next thing is, you just yeah. know all automatically. And they said it's really hard at first, but once you get going on it, you'll find it's easy and easier to schedule your day and stick to the schedule. Yeah, and it, and it really is. It, it is, I'm not saying that this is going to be an easy thing, because we've all had these questions that Jay just brought up as far as we have a lot of stuff we're trying to do. And so building it up to get to that point where you can really control your mindset and control what you're doing is critical. If we can start with 30 minutes or 60 minutes, I mean, we've all said, most of us here raised our hands and said we're gonna prospect today. If that's something we're really legitimately going to do, try this. Because what I want you to see is that it works for you. Because you're not going to use something if I just come up here and say, this is this works and, and do that. I mean, I struggle with this sometimes because I try to get too many things done. I, 
I like to be available. I like to be able to help someone when I can. And what happens is I, I dumb myself down. I start trying to switch back and forth mentally. And we like it. You know, that's the thing that's, that's a challenge is in our society, we have looked at multitasking or burning the midnight oil as this badge of honor that you can do all this great stuff. But in reality, we might get really good at doing two things at once, but we'd be better doing one and then the other. Does that make sense? Okay, so try that today and see if it works for you. Um, it'll make a difference. Okay, yeah. yeah. I was just curious, like some of these guys, that, um, what time they prospect at, because I found like later in the afternoon, I just feel like it's better when people are home instead of doing it in the morning. But I have a, yeah, so everybody's always home because you're mobile now. So the idea or the premise that oh, I gotta wait till the evening till somebody's home right. is now past. We don't have to deal with that anymore. Everybody's mobile, they're on their cell phones, they have their cell phones in their car and their hand constantly. And so that is a misconception. Uh, and so you can, I mean, alter the day you can call and make great calls and get good people on the phone. Yeah. I know I've done it. Even Pleasant. if they're not home. Even if they're not home. Yep. Even if they're not home. Sorry, I'm over. <laughs> Even if you're, they're not home, you just got to do it in the morning because you're more likely to get it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, After I, too much comes up. Gotcha. I have a little different opinion, but kind of similar. I think that the time that you get the most people home is like probably five to seven. But the reality is we have so many distractions then that it's hard to be disciplined to do it between five and seven. So in my opinion, if you don't do it in the morning, the chances of getting it done are slim. Yeah, that's for you mostly. Yeah, it's, she's yeah. right, it's yeah. fresh up. Yeah, it, but, but I think that, you know, that if the ones that have done a few transactions also know that have you ever reached somebody in the middle of the afternoon and they said something like, oh, I'm never around in the afternoon and I just picked up, you know, I mean, it, it, it happens when but you're doing. If do you don't have anything to do in the afternoon, do it then because that's a really good time. So yeah. do your morning too, but do that as extra. Because if you get an appointment, it's likely to be like five to seven. Yeah. yeah. When I did that for a month, I would switch off. I'd have one day a week where I'd start my calls at five and go until you know eight or whatever I was done. There wasn't much of a difference between the two. Prospecting in the morning and then the evening. Yeah, it, it really comes down to us trying to convince ourselves that right now is not a good time to prospect. Yeah. It's basically what we're doing. Yeah. So, yeah. It, anytime you can do it, yeah, put your 60 minutes. Now, there really isn't a bad time. Yeah, best time is when you're going to do it. Yep, talk to people. So, all right, well, let's make it a good day. Have a great weekend. I'm at the front. Do this first four. All right, close the affirmation. I got heat because I like my own. I am an optimist. I like talking to new people. I help with this one thing. I travel to people today. I have things in mind that I talk about. I am passionate about real estate. I don't confuse my career with school. I like asking questions and listening. I enjoy reading and improving my soft skills. So I'm constantly trying to function as as well. I focus on my career daily. My presentation is powerful and quick. I am able to make real daily. I am happy. I love the process and the people I visit. I make my future dreams possible. I love my life. I am grateful and thankful. I control my thinking. I have faith in me. I am not okay. I use my beliefs on opportunities each day. I can get things done. I apply and discuss and learn. I drink water daily. I connect with people. People love me. I love others. I have discipline to act on daily behavior. I apply my meditation. I set appointments daily. I don't ask for surrender. I achieve my goals. I am real estate rock star. I am passionate about my life. I live every day with purpose. I am positive when I set out goals. I grow my destiny. I am powerful and strong. I am powerful. I am powerful. I am
Myers, <laughs> 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 <laughs>